I'm going to talk about um, uh, development on uh, for and on Kubernetes. So but more as using Kubernetes, extending the Kubernetes API for uh, development proposals. Um, and in particular, I'm going to talk about the Dev Workspace operator. Is a Kubernetes operator that extend Kubernetes with a, a new custom resource that we're going to see. My name is Mario Loriedo, and I, I work for Red Hat as a developer. I work in, at the uh, developer tools uh, for Red Hat, and I'm also the project lead for Eclipse, Eclipse Che, that is a, 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 server, a service that's provision development environment on the, in the cloud. But first of all, um, just my, the, 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 the name of my talk uh, is taken from uh, this article from a few years ago, uh, Smashing the Stack for Fun and Profit. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Great article, so great that I have a, I would frame it and put it on my, at home. So uh, for the happiness of my wife, so it's, <laughs> It's, uh, it's there, so, um, but anyway, yeah, this is not about uh, security at all. The, 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 the article was, my talk is not about security, but more about uh, using Kubernetes for development. First of all, let's introduce the uh, inner loop. So the, the development loop that we're used to, um, so it's usually we call it inner loop and, we, and the activities in the inner loop are First of all, coding. Then when uh, you're happy with what you've written, you're going to build the application. And then when the build finished, you test it. And then you, you start again until you're happy. And then you, you commit your code. And then at that point, there is what we call the outer loop. That is what happened uh, after that. So today, we're, we're going to talk about the inner loop. So what usually you do uh, on your laptop. So you code your laptop, you build and then you test it. You may build, uh, use uh, external services, deploy use on Kubernetes to test your application, but usually at least the coding part often happens um, on your laptop, uh, if not all of the activities. So what about using Kubernetes instead of your laptop for all the activities? Everything is, uh, is going to run there. So on the the reason for doing that, so why, why would we want to do that, first of all? Uh, the reason are, so there are three reasons at least we want to do that. Uh, first of all, it's because provisioning uh, an environment, so configuring an, an environment on Kubernetes will be just a matter of applying some manifest. You won't have to um, install dependencies on your laptop, etc. So that will be fast. So that's, that's the first thing. So, second thing is it's repeatable. You have done it once. You are going to um, commit and version your manifest, your, the definition of your development environment, and all your team will going to benefit of it. It will be repeatable. Every new developer that will come to your team will just be able to use the manifest and it will be ready and productive in a matter of, uh, of minutes. And uh, at the end, so the, the last benefit will be that it is scalable. So it will, you will be able to scale uh, more than your laptop is able to. So if you, if you need more RAM, more memory, more CPU, you will be able to provision a more powerful uh, node or uh, pods. So and uh, something that it's hard to do with your laptop. You won't be able um, to augment memory and, and CPU easily and, and fast as you can with the cloud. So these are three reasons. These, that doesn't mean that uh, you sh we should replace your laptop with Kubernetes. There are a lot of use cases where uh, coding on your laptop uh, is more practical. But for fast development environment, for provisioning fast development environment, that's clearly um, a good option. So how would, you, would we do that? So what have we, we done? So these are like the, the resources that are currently on a Kubernetes uh, cluster. So these resources doesn't help with uh, uh, cloning a source, the source code. These resources doesn't help with 
uh, building your application or with uh, interpreting uh, your, I don't know, your uh, Node.js applications and, and running it. Uh, you, don't have, you don't have instructions for building and uh, for testing your application right away with the, these resources that are here. So what we have come with is, we've come with, with a, a new customer source that's called the DevWorkspace and a controller that comes with it that uh, manage uh, the resources of type DevWorkspace. And um, DevWorkspace is, this is an example of a simple DevWorkspace. Um, it has, at the bottom, you can see that there is a template and a component, and this is mainly the core of, um, of a dev workspace. You have, a, it's just a container, what you have here. But then you can uh, extend that with uh, source code, so you can have a source code that will be injected automatically in the, in the component. Uh, you can have commands for building, testing your application, uh, debugging it. And basically, this is the dev file specification. The dev file specification, uh, there, there was a talk this morning that we, we did about the dev file, so I'm not gonna talk more uh, about it, but the dev file is a, um, is a file, a YAML file that you can version in your, uh, with your source code uh, that looks like that. So you can version that on your source code and then uh, that will use exactly the same API you will be pretty straightforward to translate that in a, in a dev workspace, so in a Kubernetes manifest. You will have to add some uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, boilerplate, but beyond that is exactly the same API that is powerful. You can add commands, you can add uh, events for pre-start when, when you uh, start your, uh, your workspace, you can add actions that can automatically be done. Be, uh, done. And there is also a notion of parent, so you can, there is some in, in inheritance uh, of dev files. So the dev file uh, API is powerful. And we take this, that same API and we'll, we use that API to build the dev workspace uh, customer source. Now, um, I'm gonna uh, do the, run a demo uh, of the dev workspace. Uh, so, and what I would like to do is that I would like to start from a really simple dev workspace uh, and go step by step until I get uh, Visual Studio Code running where I can uh, git pull and push and I can debug my, uh, my application. And for that I'm gonna uh, actually use uh, the, this uh, microservices demo from Weaveworks and um, I'm gonna, uh, so the goal is to be able to set up an environment for uh, this service here, the front end that I have uh, I have forked here. So this is the, the, the source code. It's a Node.js application that actually depends on other microservices. So if you want to test it, you probably, you will need to run a database and another, um, another service that provides an API, REST API, so that your front end will be able uh, to talk with uh, that API and, the, the, and get the uh, information from the database. So it's not really simple, it's not just an L world, it's a little bit more than that. Um, so to show uh, that the, uh, some different use cases more powerful than just an L world. Um, so first step, we, we just want to have to get a shell with some development tools and source code. So, um, I have a cluster, I already have a cluster provisioned with the dev workspace operator installed. So and I will switch to the terminal here. So I can see that because uh, if I do a kubectl uh, explain, I can see that I actually, uh, there is a, a some description of the Dev Workspace API. So the Dev Workspace is, is available here. So what I will do is that, um, let me open another shell um, here. This is, I'm local on my laptop here, and I, I just want to monitor the uh, pods that are created on my namespace. Because it will be, it will help us to track what's happening with on, on the underlying Kubernetes. So we'll do a kubectl get with the pod, 
pods that are here. So let's watch. Okay, so um, I'm just watching, there is no pod here right now, and I'm, I'm gonna do, the, the first thing that I would like to do is that I want to create this dev workspace. So I will just do an kubectl apply of that resource. So it's a, it's a dev workspace where um, we have a project that is pointing to this git repository, and where we have a component that is this uh, image here, that is a universal image that we usually use because it has uh, all the tools, development tools and uh, language tools. So it's, it will be, it's pretty, pretty uh, straightforward to start from that. Then if we, you want some tools more specific, uh, you can customize that, but uh, this is the, uh, the default image that we use for the dev workspaces. All right, so let's just do kubectl apply of, I've numbered that, so the, the basic one. Uh, all right, so the, I've applied it, and you, you see that there, there are a pod that has been created. So there is an init phase, the, during the um, container init, the initialization, the first containers are run to clone the project. Uh, so that's why we're running, there are a couple of things that we do every time we, before starting a workspace. One of those is doing a git clone. So now it's running. So if I do a kubectl get dev workspaces, I see that, so the dev workspaces is running and I also have a link here. So if I uh, just copy that and yeah, I will open another tab. And put thing here. All right, that makes it bigger. So I've got a shell. And let's try to do something. Less bigger, and let's continue of uh, presenting here. All right, so I've I've created um, this dev workspace. So it's I've got a shell. So I have a shell. I have um, the source code as well. If I do ls, I see that I have microservices demo front end. If I can just, for example, I have vi here, so I can just uh, open that folder with vi and I can uh, navigate the code. So I'm, I haven't installed anything here, so I've, uh, I'm just running something on Kubernetes that has cloned my project, that has, uh, that has provisioned a container, that has development tools. So I will, I will we'll see that we have Git, but there is also VI, or uh, you can add even Emacs if, you're, uh, if, you, if you prefer. Um, but yeah, the, the point is that uh, we have that. But for example, um, I may be interested, so a developer may be interested to start um, customizing this. So for example, the, the prompt here is not really, uh, yeah, not, not really beautiful. So we can make it uh, more beautiful. We can, for example, change uh, some um, configuration file like the bash RC, and that's what I'm gonna do next. So second step is, adding some configuration. So injecting some files, some dot files, for example, to make things um, more beautiful. So how we do, do we do that? We do that with just a config map, with uh, some annotations. So there are some uh, annotations to say where actually the file will be mounted, how it will be mounted, and uh, then there is the data that explains, like here is just a PS1. So it's just uh, one, one just to, to show the mechanism, I'm not, putting complicated things, but you can put any file you want, and, and that will be, you, once, once you create that config map, when the uh, workspace is restarted, that file will be injected in, your, in all the containers of your uh, workspace. So um, going back here, I'm gonna run 
second step, uh, the one that will create the config map and it will uh, stop and restart the dev workspace. So we see here that is the, the pod has been terminated and it's restarted. So the, the dev workspace controller has refreshed our uh, pod. All right, so here I can just press to connect. It's gonna reconnect and my PS1 now is a little bit nicer. Um, not in fancy, but yeah, it just proved that uh, that worked. So the other thing is that if I go in my folder here, um, so I'm uh, in the source code folder, and if I just try to do good push, it asks me for my credential, right? I would like that not to happen, so I would like that to, to have my credential injected automatically. So how do we do that? we use secrets. So, and this is an example of a secret to inject Git credentials. So you can use secrets for uh, injecting cr any credential in general. And uh, this is, so still again, it's using labels and, con and annotations. The dev workspace operator will figure out that there is something that needs to be automated in, uh, in the containers. So, um, Okay, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's apply uh, the secret. Again, so the secret created. The dev workspace has been restarted. And here it tells me that it has been offline. So again, okay, it has reloaded. And if I do go in my microservices, I will be able, that was not working perfectly before, but you will see that, um, yeah. It's, I don't know why there is, it looks like there are two files that are uh, mounted, so it, it doesn't get the permission to get the credential of one of the file. Uh, but then is able to get the credential and to uh, connect to the to, to GitHub and to uh, yeah and 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 to uh, use my uh, Git credential so my username and and my token to be able to to connect to that. So we have injected the secret. So this is uh, the the Git credential. So what? So the but we haven't started coding or building yet. Nothing at all. So. We need to do that. So what I will, what I can do is that uh, once I'm here, I can do a yarn install and yarn start to build and start my application. So that happens. So I need here to. So this is cool. So my application now is running. So I've I've uh, I've been able to to build the application. Uh, and what I will do is that I will open a second, so I, do, I will duplicate my tab, and I have a second shell now, and I can test, I can just, without, uh, so what I, will, what I will do in development, I can just do a curl uh, to test if my application is responding correctly. So if I do a curl, So it says that it's listing on port 8079. Okay. Uh, so let's try that. So it's answering. So it, it, it provides me a response on the route. But then I will, I want to um, get a list of items from the catalog. So I, that's through this path here. And if I try to do that, is actually is not able to connect to the catalog because I'm just running a development, uh, so a, a container for development. I'm not running any service here, so the catalog service is not here. I'm not able to test properly my front-end application. What can we do? Uh, so now we need to uh, update our dev workspace definition. So I will... I need to switch back to the slides. 
And so I will step four. We'll add specific containers uh, for building and testing application. In particular, in this case, we'll add a couple of containers to test the application. So one is uh, an API service. Uh, the first one is catalog. And the second one is a MySQL database that is the catalog uh, DB. So I will use the command line. But this time I will do is and I'm in step four. All right. So I've patched my dev workspace, so it's restarting. And what you can see is that now the number of containers, the final containers are four. So uh, because I've added um, uh, two more containers. Before at the beginning, I only had two. Now I have, uh, I have four containers that are running. And if I uh, go back to my application, so. Okay. I need to do that again. Okay, so the application is starting and it's listening on port 8079. So I can do again curl. And I will look for catalog. And this time is is able to actually uh, yeah, provide me some uh, JSON output. So uh, and so that we, we made our uh, development environment work. So now I'm able to develop, to do development on my, um, on my front end application. Uh, but yeah, so I'm still, the, the problem is I'm still on just the common line and I like uh, graphical uh, IDEs more than, than, um, than common line ones. So what I will do is that I will add a graphical IDE to the, to the dev workspace. So last thing, we add that final component that is uh, called a Visual Code, and it's a, a, another kind of component. It's not, we only saw containers before, so of here we had added two more containers. Um, yeah, the, the type is container, but now it's a particular one. It's the one that will uh, run the ID, so we, we we call it plugin um, because it's a plugin that you so it's a definition uh, it's a def it's the Visual Studio Code is defined in another dev file that you can plug on any uh, dev workspace that you have created. So let's let's do the final step. Five. All right. So again, it's terminating. So the, the pod, you can see that it gets terminated and it will be uh, recreated. And this time it will be Visual Studio Code that will be uh, running. So the number of uh, containers is, st of container is still four because we, we are actually um, injecting Visual Studio Code inside the front-end container. We're not running it in a, in a separate container so that Visual Studio Code has access to all the tooling that it was in, the, in our development container. Okay, it looks like it's running. And if I uh, look at the dev workspace, now it has, um, uh, yeah, the, it, it has been updated, it's running, and that's the, the URL to access it. So if I go back to the yeah, here, um, and let's close one tab. And if I just do a refresh, instead of having my command line, there should be something else that should come out. 
that makes it's too big. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, just Visual Studio Code, but running in the browser. So running as a, there is a Visual Studio Code server that is running in the container, and from uh, our browser, as a, there is the Visual Studio Code client that is connecting to the server that is running uh, there. I still have uh, my shell with my PS1 that I had configured. I have also my Git configuration that has been automatically uh, provisioned. I'm able to uh, just uh, start debugging from the UI now, so it's easier um, than uh, what we had before. So it looks like, yeah, I think we need to yarn install. Yeah, it's possible to uh, add some, uh, I've already said that, but I haven't configured for that example, but it's possible to, uh, to have an init container uh, that uh, run these pre-start commands like this one, uh, but I haven't configured it here, apparently. So now the application is running. Visual Studio Code figured that out, um, and I just can uh, open it, and we can test it from here. And also, if I put uh, one breakpoint, I should be in the, yeah. So I just refresh, and it gets, it gets stopped here, okay. Uh, so that's it for the demo. So I think that we sh I show everything. Uh, so this is the resulting uh, customer source, the Dev workspace. Uh, as we so we have been going through that, we have also added a few config maps and secrets for configuration that are specific for my my environment that I don't want to uh, version with the rest. Um, so we have seen that it's fast, it's repeatable, and uh, it's scalable. I hope that we we make that point. And so you know, to learn more, um, we are on the dev file um, channel and uh, on the Kubernetes Slack, or you can find us also on uh, uh, GitHub, the, the dev file organization. There is the, the repository for the dev workspace operator uh, source code.